the approval of the minutes from May 29th. I hope you all have had a chance to look at those minutes. Uh, if so, I would entertain any discussion on those minutes or a motion for approval. Thank you. Motion from Chad from Farmington. Is there a second? Thank you. David from Layton City is a second. All in favor, say aye. Any opposed? Okay. Minutes are passed. Thank you. The next item we have um, in number two on our agenda is the Transportation Improvement Program Business. Uh, we'll turn the time over to Ben Withrich. He's going to be reviewing the draft 2025-2030 TIP and the 2025-2030 conformity. Thank you, Brooke. Good morning, everybody. Good to be with you. Um, as a reminder, if there's questions or comments, did you say that already, Brooke, on the microphone? i nervous getting ready here. Um, today is uh, one of those days. It's kind of a culmination of all the hard work all of us have been involved with. Um, as you'll recall here, um, earlier in this year, actually back in May on our meeting on the 29th, the Technical Advisory Committee reviewed the information in preparation for the draft 25-2030 Transportation Improvement Program to go out for public review and comment. Um, on the 20th, Transcom, the Transportation Coordinating Committee for the Wasatch Front Regional Council, which is made up of the elected officials, approved the document and um, allowed it to go out for public review and comment. That period began on the 29th of June and concluded this past Saturday on August 3rd. During that time of the public review and comment period, we had two open houses. We had one in the Salt Lake area there at the Intermodal Center, and we had one on the 16th here in the Ogden, uh, Layton Urban area up at the Ogden Intermodal Center. And we were soliciting comments um, from everyone as well as providing information or the opportunities for them to review the projects and to make any comments on those projects or any general comments that they might have. Today is August 7th. As we are here with the TAC committee, the intention is to bring back to you the report from the public review and comment period. Um, this information then will be provided to Transcom, which will meet next week on the 15th. They will review the information of and then they will make recommendations for the Regional Council to approve the 2025-2030 Transportation Improvement Program. Once the Regional Council approves that, we will prepare the final document in coordination with UDOT with the other MPOs of the state, and that will be submitted to Federal Highways and Federal Transit for their review during the month of September. Then hopefully the intent is, is come October 1 of 2024, we will have a new transportation improvement program, the 2020, the 2025, 2030 TIP. And as you all are aware, the next round will actually begin here at the end of August for the next round. So our, we kind of overlap the next process and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But Many of you will probably recall back on the end of our May there where we had the opportunity, we provided you with your family some very high level entertainment so that you could go home and you could log on to WFRC.org and you could pull up the tip. That was probably an eventful night, maybe the highlight of your summer vacation. Uh, I bet you took slides and pictures, but Anyway, that allowed you to review the interactive map, which was online, where you could click on a specific project and you could get the information. This was provided to the locals as well as to the local governments. Hopefully, you all received that follow-up email that had a copy of the tables. Um, in that information that was provided was uh, a, a copy of the tables, and there was, it looks... It's a fairly good sized document with the front part of that document. I've got a hard copy if you need a, a hard copy, but you can print or you can wait for the final 
But there's a 11 by 17 sheets of the programs that the Wasatch Front Regional Council has a priority to program. That's the STP, the CMAC, the TAP, and the CRP, and you're familiar with those programs. In addition to that are the tables that are identified by the Department of Transportation that include all the other transportation projects along the Wasatch Front. And in addition to that are the projects that are identified or that UTA takes the lead in the programming of the funds. Overall, this document represents more than $7 billion worth of projects just in our area. That goes from Brigham City down to Utah County, and it includes projects in Morgan and Tooele. So there's a lot of projects over the next six years, and a lot of those projects are in your areas and a lot of those projects you help recommend. In addition to that tip table is the air quality memorandum. This identifies the, it was the conformity analysis for the 25-2030 tip. And this demonstrates that we are conforming to an approved regional transportation plan. So with that information, it was all available. We went out for public comment. And Wayne, I believe you are on. Do you want to address the public comment summary? You bet. Can you hear me all right? Yes. So uh, we received uh, about 350 comments via the interactive map. About 250 of those were uh, through clicking on specific projects on the map, another hundred ish were via the general comment form that's available that we make available uh, along with the the map itself, and another twenty uh, <clears throat> were gathered from the uh, two open houses, one in up in at the Ogden Intermodal Center and the, the other at the Salt Lake Intermodal Center. So that gave us about a total of uh, 376 uh, comments. <clears throat> and I'll just share a handful of themes uh, in summarizing the comments. Does not capture, this summary does not capture every single comment, but um, the vast majority of them. Uh, support was expressed for additional safe bicycle infrastructure. Requests were made to safely accommodate bicyclists and pedestrians in several roadway projects. A number of comments were made in favor of front runner strategic double tracking. Requests were made for more transit service and improvements to existing service. A number of commenters asked that more funding be spent on expanding transit instead of on road widening or new construction. And lastly, many comments, about a third of the total comments, were made in support of the Rio Grande plan to take railroad lines underground, underground in downtown Salt Lake City. So that gives you a flavor of the primary themes that uh, we saw in uh, going through all of the comments. Uh, any questions or additional thoughts? Hearing none, I'll turn it back to you, Ben. Thank you, Wayne. So what we will do then with these comments is, as Wayne has initiated going through each project or each comment, we will address each comment. We'll utilize the staff from UTA. We'll utilize the staff from UDOT Region 1, UDOT Region 2, as well as UDOT Central. We'll address those comments, and then that report will be generated and be made available uh, for the public probably sometime in early September. We will have a little more in-depth uh, information available for Transcom and the Regional Council for their approval. That information is then also carried on to the programming meetings with the regions, both UDOT Region 1 and UDOT Region 2. As we implement projects and move forward, 
these comments and that are I you know are reviewed and uh, are considered with each project. So it's important that the public know that when we're out gathering this information, it is information that we consider very valuable, that we utilize if there's city specific projects um, or comments on your projects, we will also share that information with you. But all that information will be made uh, available for the public. Anything else you would add, Wayne or Kip? Uh, maybe I'll just note as a kind of elaborating on some of what Ben said there uh, for the Transcom and Regional Council meetings, not only do we provide a summary of the comments and a list of all of the comments, those are part of the meeting materials that are sent to the elected officials and other members of those committees. Um, but we also provide a, uh, a general response uh, to each of those themes. Um, and then as Ben indicated, over the coming weeks, we will be preparing uh, in responses to each individual comment. So. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, Wayne. All right. Well, then, and I can't remember, Madam Chair, on the agenda is uh, wins of funding programs. Is that next? May I go into that? Is that all right while I'm standing right here? So as we saw in the calendar, then, we have the, the next process and begins at the latter part of August. And what that is, is the regional council will direct staff to send out a request for letters of intent. Many of you are familiar with the letter of intent. It's the identification of a project with a very brief, maybe a couple of sentences long on a description of what the objectives of the project are, the name of the project, the from and the to, and maybe a, an estimate, not maybe, but an estimate of the cost of the project and then that's submitted to staff. And so those letters of intent will be due at the, the 26th of September. So come here near the end of August, each of you will receive in your email a full packet. That packet will have this front summary sheet as well as on the back side of that, it'll also have a calendar. There we go, sorry, clicked ahead. It'll have kind of a just a calendar when the letters of intent are due, when the concept reports or the applications are due, which I incidentally are due on December 12th. But there'll be a one page that reviews each of these funding programs so that if you have a question or if when you're working with your staff or your, your cities or elected officials and they go, hey, how about something like this? You've got a reference to be able to go back to. But the most important thing to know is that WFRC staff, we're there to help you. So if you've got a question on a project, is with this project eligible? What kind of funding would be eligible for this project? Give us a call. Let us help. Submit a letter of intent. It could be for all programs. It could be for one program. And if it's the wrong program, no big deal. What we will do when the staff does a real high level uh, evaluation to determine eligibility, we'll recommend back to you what concept report or what application would be appropriate to submit, or if it would be better to go after a different resource. We'll try every way we can to help you be successful in your application. We're very fortunate up here in the ogden Layton urban area. We get the privilege to work with uh, Weber County, Davis County, we try to dovetail our programs together. We work with each other. We adjust our schedules so that we can help projects move along. So the intent is to help the local governments accomplish what you have on your plates. And so that's kind of a heads up where you need to be, what you need to be looking for. So at the end of this month, look for an email that has our funding programs on there and an invitation to prepare those letters of intent. And if you have any questions, please holler. Or if you got questions, I guess I should say tough. No, I mean, if you got something now, uh, okay, Madam Chair, that's all.
Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Wayne, for uh, the update and for the information on our process. So I hope you all marked those dates down on your calendar. Those are very important dates and uh, get your applications, your letters of intents in. Again, that was September 26th for your letters of intents and applications will be due December 12th, 2024. So looks like the next item we have is item number four. We have a presentation from Far West City. So we'll invite Matt Robertson to uh, come on up and present on a project from Far West. Thanks. Is it easiest to join Zoom? Cool. Whoops. Yeah, let's see that. yeah, I'm trying to see that work. See if I can. Guess that works all right. Okay. Well, thanks for having me. Um just quick introduction. I'm uh, Matt Robertson with, uh, I work for Jones and Associates. Uh, Sam's here as well. So I'm like, hey, I know that guy. Um, with Jones and Associates, we do a lot of uh, city engineering for some of the communities um, up here. And uh, I, I'm the city engineer for Far West City. So I've got uh, Mayor Fippen back here. He really knows, obviously, way more than I do about everything that's going on in the city. So I'll... Uh, welcome him to chime in on anything that I mess up or uh, if you want any more information. So uh, yeah, Far West, we wanted to, you know, Mayor, Mayor Fippen and I were just talking about what we might uh, discuss. And the more we talked about it, we realized, hey, for a fairly small, you know, what we've always felt like is a small city, we've got quite a bit going on these days. Um, just like a lot of you guys, uh, our city's growing. And it's changing quite a bit, and there's a lot going on. So we wanted to highlight some of the growth and um, some of the transportation needs that we're dealing with and the growth that we're experiencing in the city. So just real quick, if you're not familiar with where Far West is at, um, northern uh, end of, far, of uh, Weber County. This is the Box Elder County, Weber County line here, up here at the top, and we're surrounded by Plain City, Marriott Slaterville, Harrisville, and, and Pleasant View um, around us a little bit of Ogden as well. So um, just up there in kind of the north, northwest uh, corner of Weber County. Uh, it's about 5.8 square miles and uh, current population is around 7,700. Um, population, just to give you a reference in 2000 was just over 3,000. So um, like a lot of the cities, especially out west, um, we've more than doubled um, in the last 20, 24 years or so. And um, it was primarily an agricultural, you know, farming community, and that's changed quite a bit. So it's converting over to a lot of residential, commercial, manufacturing developments. So we wanted to highlight some of those developments. There's some large mixed-use developments, commercial developments. Um, the 2700 North um, interchange with I-15 has quite a bit of commercial and a lot of stuff going on there as well. And then another interesting thing that we deal with or kind of a challenge that we deal with in the city is we do have I-15 right here um going running right through the middle of our city as well as the willard canal if you're familiar with the willard canal it diverts um off of the uh ogden right and then uh takes it over or is it the weber both yeah because they come in together don't they right there and uh goes over to willard bay it actually can feed both ways if you guys are familiar with that but it uh, primarily is taking water over to willard bay that is owned by it's managed by weber basin owned by um the Bureau of Reclamation. So getting crossings across that canal can be difficult. And so we're kind of limited um, with our connectivity from east to west um, with the canal and I-15 that run through the city. So there are just some unique challenges that we deal with. Um, I wanted to show you real quick uh, what I, I love looking back at uh, historical imagery, and this isn't that far back, just going back on Google, 1998, um, you know, 25, 26 years ago, uh, this is what the city looked like. So like I said, farming community. I grew up just right at the top of the screen, just barely out of the screen, right up here. I grew up uh, in Harrisville, just barely outside of Far West. And this is the Far West that I remember running around um, with buddies um, during my junior high and high school days. This is the Far West. I remember a lot of farms, uh, very rural. 
Um, actually, hey, Ke Kevin Campbell with uh, Centerville, y young married couple, lived about right there, right? Just down the street there. So, yeah, somewhere in there. <laughs> anyway, it uh, it's changed quite a bit. So to, to give you an idea, that's 1998. This is uh, 2023. Um, as you can see, just a lot of residential, primarily a lot of residential developments filled in these old um, these farms. Uh, we've got a golf course now, a nice golf course in the city, which is great. Um, and yeah, just a lot of uh, residential developments. Uh, this is the 2700 North Interchange that I talked about. We have, you know, if you're familiar with that, there's some, you know, fast food joints and other things over here. Um, and I wanted to jump into some of these developments and just give you an idea of what's going on. So there's still continuation of a lot of single family residential going in. In the past 20 or some odd years, most of the residential that's gone in has been, you know, half acre, third acre, down to a quarter acre lots, right, Mayor? That's primarily, so we, so generally it's been, you know, larger um, single family lots that has been the development over the last 20 plus years. Um, now we've got, just like everywhere, a lot of uh, higher density um, coming in, more affordable or attainable housing options. Um, and I wanted to highlight a few of those. So there's a river blacksmith um, is what it's called, mixed use, about 79 acres with uh, almost 300 residential units and then some light industrial and commercial lots and open space. There's um, up off of 2700 North, there's a potential development with um, some larger commercial and other paths as well as higher density residential. Um, and then there's a, what we call an innovative commercial zone that we're working on a zoning ordinance change. It's actually um, right next door. If you guys drive up there, you see a huge uh, empty Amazon facility in Marriott Slaterville right off the freeway. Um, Amazon built that, they're not using it yet, but right on uh, that's right on the uh, border with Marriott Slaterville and Far West. And we have a zone right next to it that may bring in something similar or other, um, I guess, uh, commercial type development in that area. Um, there's manufacturing areas, I'll get into that. And then a big one that's not actually in our city, and you guys have probably heard about this, and there was a KSL article about a week ago about JDC Ranch. It's in uncorp unincorporated Weber County, um, but it's sandwiched in between Far West and Plain City. And it's bringing in, they just uh, increased the density recently to about a thousand residential units. So obviously going to have a, a pretty large impact on our infrastructure and roads in Far West. So I'll show where these are at. So here's back to that uh, image of the city. That um, River Blacksmith is this area right here. Um, the uh, 27, 25, 1900 West Commercial area. There's this area next to the, that's the Amazon building right there on that side. And then, uh, right, yeah, right there. And then some manufacturing area. And then this is the big uh, JDC ranch, more more or less. I don't know if I nailed it exactly, but that's more or less where um, there, those thousand units as well as some commercial is going in. So uh, just real quick, here's the uh, the River Blacksmith. They're having some, um, this is a UDOT road, 2000 West. Uh, they've got some kind of light industrial commercial over there, along with uh, these residential townhomes over in the single family. Um, this is that 2725 North. We don't have quite the, the concept uh, develop or plan that we can share quite yet, but this is a hot topic right now in the city because they're looking at developing this whole area. This is right off the interchange with I-15. You've got that Maverick right here and some of those uh, fast food joints there. Uh, <laughs> If you've ever gotten off on that interchange, it gets pretty congested right yeah, there um, by I-15. So there's a new light up at 1740 West. The idea is that I think UDOT will eventually have a median once this gets this road gets connected to take traffic up to that light. And then um, this new roadway has been funded, and I'll, I'll show you some of the projects that have been funded. But it's been partially funded by uh, WACOG, and then uh, there will be heavy developer participation, obviously, to build this um, this new roadway that will come along the back of these and then tie in um, over into Pleasant View. So this is the, the city limit right here. And uh, there's one developer looking right now at this entire piece. So we'll see what happens. You, you know how that goes. We'll... Um, wait and see if it goes through, but there's been a lot of work on that and it could potentially bring in um, quite a bit um, into the city as far as commercial and, and some higher density 
um, residential in the back part over here. So there's a lot of coordination with Pleasant View and Weber County. We do have some challenges with this. There's uh, the large Western drain. There's a petroleum line running through here. And then this is actually an old railroad right of way, the old Southern uh, Railroad. So UP technically owns it. And you know how, even if they don't have tracks or ever gonna have tracks there, we all know how difficult it can be. Uh, well, or I'll just say how long it takes sometimes to get uh, pro property acquisition or things with uh, anything with the railroad. So those are some uh, challenges that we're facing on this one, but um, we're excited about the prospects here. This is that area that's just zoomed in a little bit next to the Amazon building um, that we're working on a new uh, zone for and coordinating quite a bit with Marriott Slater. But just like on the last one, we're coordinating a lot with Pleasant View. Pleasant View was actually the application, um, the one who submitted the application to WACOG with Far West, a joint applicant on that. This one, there's a lot of uh, coordination between Marriott Slaterville and, and Far West to, to do something that makes sense and and to get these road connections out to, to 400 North um, to whatever develops in here. Uh, this is another one, Associated Foods is a huge, uh, they've been there a long time, huge uh, manufacturing or trucking operation right there in the city. There's some large manufacturing coming in um, on this end that's going to connect to the Weber Industrial Park. So the developer, we actually had a pre-construction meeting this morning with them, is um, building this road, connecting into the Weber Industrial Park for this development. And then we're um, trying to work on funding and, and um, coordination with Associated Foods to get this road connected. Problem we have right now is if <laughs> this is a city road, 1850 West, and they use it as a overflow parking and we get semis just parked along here nonstop. No matter what we do as enforcement, it seems to never help, but it's kind of a problem. Um, real quick, here's a little aerial I stole off of Nielsen Homes. I should have put that on there, but it stole it off their website. Nielsen Homes is the developer of that JDC Ranch area. So this is that large um, area and that's our city limit right there. So they'll have connections out on the 2700 North, which is a UDOT road, but on the North side, um, they'll be connecting to obviously roads that come into our city. So just to finish up with all that being said, all the development going on in the city, there's obviously some, a lot of transportation needs. Um, so WFRC and WACOG, the Weber County have been great to work with, um, in, um, partnering up and, and helping us, uh, fund some of these projects. So, uh, I'll show you real quick. So 4,000 North on the North end. That accesses like the South Marina of Willard Bay and goes into Weber County and in, down into Plain City. Um, that's been funded by, uh, we have federal and county money to widen that um, road up to the state road. 3,300 North, uh, whoops, sorry. Got a little crazy there. 3,300 North, uh, our first phase is funded. Um, that connects to this North Plain City Road that um, is also getting widened in Plain City. A lot of that JDC Ranch is this big development is right here. So we anticipate the traffic increasing um, on this roadway. So we have um, a widening and a roundabout um, funded right now through um, WFRC and WACOG. And then phase two, hopefully in the future, we'll get the rest of it funded. Uh, this is that one I showed you with Plain City or Pleasant View and, and Far West funded with WACOG. 1740 West, con continuing that connection on the other side has been funded by WACOG. And then this, we have uh, a roundabout at 1200 West and West Harrisville Road where the uh, uh, Rulon White, uh, the industrial park comes out and we experience quite a bit of traffic right there. And it's just a four-way stop. That's received partial funding um, through CMAC right now. So uh, that's kind of in a nutshell what's going on. Like I said, there's quite a bit for, for our little town, but um, we do have an incredible city staff a uh, great mayor. I'm saying that because he's here, but it's true also. But uh, and great staff that they. I'm I'm so impressed. We work with a lot of cities. I mean, honestly, um, in our firm and Far West uh, does a really really good job of stretching their resources, and their staff does an incredible job of maintaining everything and looking to the future. Um, they get really good um, participation and involvement from their council and planning commission. They do quite a bit of work, so it's fun to work with them. Um, just uh, finish up, this is at 4,000 North. Um, we're widening about down to the city limit up to the state road right there. Gives you an idea of how close Willard Bay is right there. And that's our Smith Family Park. That's looking back into the city. So 
Any quick questions? I know I probably rambled too long for you guys, but that's what we got going on. So, okay, thanks guys. Thank you, Matt. That was uh, very informative. I'm from that area. So I'm like, that's crazy. I too used to run around uh, back in the day in high school around there. So yes, it has changed a ton and looks like a lot more to come. So thank you. That was a great presentation. Um, we need to go back to item two, if that's okay. Um, we failed to mention, uh, we actually were wanted to ask if um, this group was okay with recommending approval to uh, Transcom on the uh, draft 2025-2030. So I, I'll open that item up for discussion um, and then we can take a motion. Um, what we're looking for is approval to take this uh, draft 2025-2030 uh, tip to Transcom. Is there anybody that would like to discuss that or have a recommendation or a motion? Thank you, motion to approve from, I apologize, I forgot your name. Kevin Campbell from Centerville City. Second from David Mitchell, Davis County. Appreciate it. Okay, any discussion to the motion? Seeing none, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you, Ben. All right, so we'll move into our, uh, looks like, final agenda item. It's some other business. Is there any other business that anybody would like to discuss today? Anybody online have anything they'd like to discuss or mention? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. We want to thank Far West City uh, for bringing the mayor, one, and then their mayor bringing the refreshments. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your presentation. We appreciate it. Looks like our next meeting is going to be held October 16th, um, and we have Harrisville City down for um, a presentation and the meeting refreshments. So with that, if there isn't any other business, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Thank you. We are adjourned. <laughs>